This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, call the meeting to order. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, this is the meeting of the Davenport Public Library Board of Trustees. Um, it's being held at the Fairmont Library on Tuesday, February 16th, 2021, in the Brook Room. Uh, this is a partially electronic meeting, and it's being held that way because fully in person meetings, um, it's not possible or impractical or is impractical due to concerns for the health and safety of board members, staff, and the public presented by COVID-19 and to follow the mayor's executive order directing social distancing and placing restrictions on gatherings. Uh, In-person attendance by the general public at any city of Davenport public meeting within its facilities um, shall be limited to 10 persons. We have a quorum, so we will go ahead with the meeting. Um, first of all, I have a roll call just to establish who we have. Um, Joe Heinrichs. Here. Amanda Motto. Here. Craig Cooper. Here. Judy Lance. Here. Malavika Shrikandi. I see you. <laughs> okay. There you are. Um, Maggie Motto. Here. Thank you. Um, Steve Emming, I'm here. Uh, Tom Engelman. I didn't see Tom on there. And Sylvia Roba. Okay. Have them as temporarily absent anyway. Okay. Carry on with the agenda then. And. Uh, Thank you everyone for taking the time to participate in today's meeting. I'll mention also we're present at the meeting um, is uh, Amy Groskoff, the library director, Casey Shipley, the operations manager, Lexi Riley, the assistant director, Jennifer Williams, the um, operations manager. Whoops, no. Um, okay, sorry. I was correct. Jennifer Williams, operations manager. Tracy Moore is development director, and Laura Gennis, the president of the Friends of the Library Board. Is there anyone I missed? Okay, there we go. First item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, Malavika, thank you. Is there a second? Second, Craig. Craig? Okay, thank you, Craig. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by, whoops, I'll, sorry, I have to have a roll call. Um, Joe? Yes. Thank you. Amanda? Yes. Thank you. Craig? Yes. Thank you. Judy? Yes. Thank you. Palavika? Got a thumbs up. Okay. I see the photos of the library on Facebook are really cool. Yeah, we can't, you're really broken up, can't understand you. No, it's considered to be working. Okay, thumbs up is good enough. <laughs> okay. Um, Maggie Motto? Yes. Thank you. And my own vote is yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public with comment. Seeing and hearing no one, we'll move on. Next item on the agenda is reports and communications. First item there is friends. Um, Laura, you have a report for us this morning? This afternoon? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Uh, just a brief report today. We are still working. Our primary focus right now is on our annual board work plan. So we discussed that again. Um, I feel like it was last week, but maybe it was two weeks ago. And we're identif we've identified our priorities, surveyed our members, aggregated the results, and are kind of looking right now individually in committee work to quantify those goals. 
um, one of the things that Amy brought to us that I think we're going to try to move forward um, expeditiously on is um, I beg your pardon. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Malavika, can you um, mute your mic and then maybe use the phone to call in? I think we'll be better off then. Okay, thank you, Malavika. Laura, would you go ahead, please? Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to try and move forward with quickly is uh, perhaps supporting the library in providing some support for postage to mail materials at home, um, kind of as a pilot program. Amy had presented that idea to the group and I think that that really speaks to um, accessibility and equi equitability among our patrons. So I'm looking at that as a way to maybe do a short-term pilot program where we would assist in some of that funding uh, for the postage. So that's another thing that we're considering. Um, and then, you know, we're in the process right now where we need to be um, thinking about bench strength and transitioning the responsibilities uh, to newer members of the organization as some members have tendered their resignations or indicated that they will not be continuing at the end of their term. So I open that to this group as well. If anyone knows anyone that would be a, a um, strong supporter of the Friends of Davenport Public Library and really champion our mission, building awareness in the public and helping us with our fundraising efforts to support pro programming, please um, pass that name along to me or to Amy or whoever um, you feel may be able to, to share that information because that's something that we are really looking forward um, to doing is kind of building out our, our group here. And um, then the final thing that we did is, of course, you know, as a not, oh, and I should state that to be in the Friends, you don't have to be a resident of the city of Davenport. So I know that to be a trustee, you, or a trustee, you do. So if there are people that you have thought maybe would be good champions of the library but aren't Davenport residents, so they haven't been able to be a trustee, that would be a great candidate for us to consider as a Friends Board member. So I just wanted to share that with your group. And then the final thing is that we, um, of course, are a non-for-profit, not-profit, non not pro no, oh my gosh, you know what I'm trying to say, not-for-profit or non-profit, there we go. Um, so we just uh, uh, submitted our 990 the informational return to the IRS, and we approved that at our last meeting. So I think that's all the updates I have. Um, thank you for the time today. Thank you, Laura. Are there any questions or comments for Laura? Well, as always, we appreciate the assistance you provide to the library in multiple ways. Thank you for that. Um, Malavika has uh, entered some questions into the chat since uh, she's indicated she's having trouble with her speakers. Um, she asked what time the meet the friends meetings are, Laura. Um, I believe they're the second Tuesday of the month at noon. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi. Okay. <clears throat> Moving along, the next item on the agenda is committee reports. Um, first item there is finance. Um, Tom is not here yet, or I don't know if he will be. Did he say he would? He said he would be here. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll hold on, then maybe we'll catch him later. Uh, next item is a personnel committee. Um, Amanda or Maggie, and Craig, anything there? Nothing on our end. Okay, thank you. And uh, see Amanda, or excuse me, um, now, Malavika put a note up there that there's no report for advocacy. That was the next item. So thank you, Malavika. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda under committee reports, excuse me, reports and communications is the director report. Amy? Okay. Um, so just a, a, a few things. Um, we kind of um, flesh out a a little bit of the information I shared on my director's report. So we um, had more discussions with city staff who were involved with their um, CDBG program, um, as well as Cecilia Bailey from the um, Quasi Open Network and um, Chad Dyson from the Parks Department last Friday. Um, and we are, we're continuing to work on ideas of how all three of these entities together um, might qualify for some of the um, CARES Act 
funding that's being allocated through community development block grants. Um, it is specifically to um, help deal with the effects of uh, and impacts of COVID-19 um, on members of the community. So we're looking at um, potentially some additional literacy um, programming um, with outreach because we know from the um, test scores with the Downport schools that um, achievement in reading certainly has suffered um, as the schools have been closed. Um, so things that we might be able to do to help um, close some of those gaps. And then also just um, perhaps um, using the outreach vehicle, um, you know, getting out in the community more um, into uh, low income and underserved neighborhoods and, um, and having a staff member there who would be able to connect residents um, with resources using the open network hub. So um, this is something that the library was, is going to be involved in either way, but this would hopefully provide um, for some additional funding so we could um, really do a push with that um, and help folks deal with COVID-19 related um, impacts. So we're, we're working on that um, and we'll keep you up to date on, on where we go with that. Um, we are not to my knowledge, SORA, the program that I mentioned um, about that allows Downport Community School students to access our ebooks and e audiobooks um, really seamlessly using their school issued device and their school ID. The last time I checked, which I think was Thursday afternoon, um, we were not quite up yet on that. So I think we're just waiting for um, the service is up and available and it works, but the students aren't being given access to our collection yet. So we're just waiting for our vendors to figure out those final connections. Um, I'm going to skip down then. I'll, I'll go back to the reservation um, and just note that um, the, the last item that I noted about working on plans to safely add some additional services back for patrons. Um, the one that we're specifically looking at, and Lexi and I are going to meet with um, two of the supervisors who have a lot of staff to do this, um, is the notary service um, that we offer. Um, that has been something that our patrons have really missed, and we get lots and lots of questions about it. Um, people can go other places for notary service, um, but generally speaking, those places charge for, for that service, and our service is free. So um, we think we can figure out ways to do that safely. And um, so we would like to add that service um, back in. Um, and then come March, um, again, everything depending on how things are going, um, we're thinking about perhaps coming back to the board with the, uh, about lifting the capacity limits. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that we've never come close to hitting those limits. And um, if we're not, formal, if we don't have a formal limit, um, then um, the staff that we have at our welcome desk, um, we can um, redirect them um, to other tasks and, um, and things like that. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking at for that, um, just in case you're curious. Um, like I said, we are hoping, hoping that the mayor will keep that um, citywide um, mask mandate, or at least for, um, for wearing masks in city-owned facilities um, in place through March. We think that would be really very helpful to us. So we're really hoping that 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 happens. Um, the renovation project, um, I do have some photos that um, Casey is going to share our screen. Um, this is a PDF. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have to just kind of minimize that. Don't text it. Yeah. There we go. So this is just, um, this is not super exciting. This is just the second floor showing the, um, the contractor, um, much to their chagrin, I think. They, um, um, the contract requires that they be responsible for moving the bookshelves. And I think they thought that was an easy thing. And um, we tried to tell them it wasn't, but um, I think they've kind of got it figured out. But these two gentlemen have been working and that's all they've been doing, I think, probably for the last 10 days is moving um, ranges to their new location. So um, so that's been, I think, an interesting learning experience for them. <laughs> so, 
Okay, so this is, um, you, you want to see if you can maybe shrink that down a little bit, Stacey. I'm going to the, the size of the PDF. Um, instead of 143, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's there. So much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is now one of our second floor restrooms. Um, and this is really one of the things that we have the most challenge with is that you'll notice the um, way in back you see some ductwork. So that's part of a ventilation shaft um, that goes um, down to the basement. And um, you, you, you see without the ceiling there, it's just, it's not a, um, like a fire corridor kind of thing. So what, what we don't want to have happen and what we need to fix um, and what they're working on is that right now, the way it is, if we just put the walls and the ceiling back up the way um, the way they were, um, basically, um, if their fire starts in the basement, it can easily travel up that shaft and then um, expand out through the restrooms into um, into the rest of the library. So, um, so they're working on um, kind of putting in the appropriate um, fixes for that and some fire dampers on some deck work and things like that. So right now we're waiting for change orders on that particular um, project. And um, that's the thing that is really um, messing with our, uh, our schedule. So um, the contractor thinks that we, um, we can probably reopen while those restrooms are still being finished off. Um, with our limited capacity, those restrooms were locked the whole time um, since the pandemic started anyhow. So I don't think we need them in order to um, be able to reopen. Um, but that's really kind of our, one of our biggest challenges at this point in time. So while I'm talking about change orders, I'll just say that right now the total change orders that have been approved um, amounts to just under $21,000. So we're still staying well within um, our budget. And, and within the funds that we have available. So this um, it shows the new storefront glass um, is going to be between um, the children's area and um, the rest of the main floor. So, and you can also see some of the new carpet um, that's in that area. And this is the, the framing um, for the, um, the glass walls that's going to create the new study rooms. So those, those rooms will be all glass and visible. So um, while they will be soundproof, um, they will not be super private um, for everybody using those, which was what we intended. So um, that's the area that used to be um, one of the classrooms for the old CAA space. And then this is um, looking down the hallway south towards the, um, the loading dock. And this space is the new um, customer services workroom. So the, the new carpet has been laid there. You can see the grid work for the, um, the ceiling and kind of where the pointer is, where Casey has the, the mouse down further. That's where the um, new work desk is going to be, kind of against that back wall. Um, lots of covered space there. It's, it's a long, narrow space. The sort is kind of long and narrow, and um, the sort of space will be um, a little tight, but um, I think it should be workable. There is actually, um, the technicians are here today um, to move the sorter you know, into this new space. And then once that happens, um, they'll take down um, the glass walls around the old room, and they'll be able to finish that space off and get that painted. So. Um, they think that they should finish all the all the installation of the new um, glass this week, um, except that the doors um, are won't be here till March 15th, which was when we were kind of targeting to reopen. Um, they're going to start working on carpet and another flooring again next week, and um, just kind of keeping moving on with that. It is really nice to see them actually putting the building back together, and it's certainly a lot less noisy, um, but it's really nice to see it come together after all the, the dust and the um, and the demolition that went on. So um, I think it will be really nice. Um, 
when it's all done. That's demolition and not to mention the noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do have a lot of dusting and things that we'll be doing. <laughs> um, before we um, before we end up reopening the bookcases, um, even though they were all covered with plastic, um, there's still plenty of dust around, so we'll need to be doing some dusting and things like that. And, but, um, but so far, everything seems to be going well, and Lexi's plans for shifting the collection have, have worked, and that's been going really well. And um, so I think we're in we're in pretty good shape. So we just need to solve that that resident issue. So, and um, in terms of budget for that, again, um, and um, Laura doesn't know this, we received um, a thousand dollar check in the mail today um, for the capital campaign. Um, additional funding from somebody who had already pledged, and we are um, hopeful that um, there will be somebody else who is looking for some naming opportunities who will be um, hopefully making um, a fairly substantial donation um, as well. So, um, unsolicited, that was just really great news. They're looking for um, a way to honor their parents and. Um, Notice that we were doing this project and had some um, naming um, opportunities available. So, all right, I think that's it. Unless anybody has any um, particular questions about anything, please check out your items within this time limit. Browsing time is limited to 30 minutes. So, um, they will access that um, from their school issued um, Chromebook or whatever device that is, Malavika. So the, the, okay. the school, um, the IT people have pushed the app out. Um, and so that should be on everybody's devices. And then, yeah, they'll put, just put their school ID in um, for access. Avi, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, now I can, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no other questions or comments, we'll move along. Um, this will swing back to the um, earlier part of it. Um, committee reports, reports. Tom, anything for finance? No. Uh, the uh, the budget looks pretty good based on where we're at the year. Thank you. Uh, yes, and uh, also we'll mention um, for those on the phone or who may be watching the recording of this, uh, Tom Engelman has joined the meeting now. Appreciate him being here. Okay. Um, I don't think Marion McGinnis is, has joined the meeting. Okay. We'll skip the council liaison report. Okay, moving along to new business. Um, First item there uh, having to do with the renovations. First item there is a motion to approve the following names for areas at the main library to recognize specific donors to the main library renovation project. Those are the Scott County Regional Authority for the children's area, the Regional Development Authority meeting room, the Acentra Credit Union study room, and the RIA Federal Credit Union study room. Is there a second? Excuse me, we have a motion in that regard. So moved. Hey, thank you, Tom. I have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, thank you, Malavika. Have a second. Okay, so I have a motion and a second to approve the naming of the areas for the Scott County Regional Authority Children's Area, the Regional Development Authority Meeting Room, the Accenture Credit Union Study Room, and the RIA Federal Credit Union Study Room. Is there any discussion? How are these decided on? How are these chosen? It's based on the level of contribution um, that was made. So when we started the capital campaign, um, working with the friends, um, we established various levels of giving that would um, confer those naming abilities. 
Maybe could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, do we have, is there other areas that are still available to be named? Yep. Okay. Yep. So if other folks come forward, they can get their name on a room. Yep. Yep. Okay. And if, if the donation um, comes from the folks that were, that have been in contact with us, we'll come to the board with another. Okay. Uh, another request. Yep. yep. Good. Any other questions or comments? Was everyone able to hear the questions and answers that were just given? Okay, hearing from no one, I assume they did. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the following names for areas. The Scott County Regional Authority Children's Area, the Regional Development Authority Meeting Room, the Centra Credit Union Study Room and the RIA Federal Credit Union Study Room. I'll call for the vote. Amanda? Yes. Thank you. Tom? Yes. Thank you. Craig? Yes. Thank you. Judy? Yes. Thank you. Alavika? Okay, a thumbs up, thank you. Maggie? Yes. Thank you. Joe? No. No, okay, thank you. Uh, my own vote is yes, motion carries. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the discussion regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives and board involvement. Just a little bit of um, refresher, perhaps. Um, a quick summary here of the uh, email I sent to you. Um, I said in that in that email, um, Amy had uh, mentioned that a number of the staff were very interested in looking into some issues um, about diversity and equity inclusion in the library, and um, those fell into uh, I think basically four areas. Um, potentially, these are related to internal policy, like hiring, uh, how the staff works with patrons, um, and services uh, the library provides. And so, um, and in all of this would be um, potentially having board members involved um, in working with these committees, and also um, board involvement on a steering committee that would kind of um, oversee and coordinate uh, the work of the various committees. So the first item in there um, had to do with increasing diversity of our workforce. And um, maybe I guess, um, I think before I go into that, I'd ask Amy if there's there anything in particular that you'd like to um, enhance upon or um, I, I think what, what Steve sent is, is um, fairly um, complete. It's um, the, the diversity of the, the city workforce in general is a challenge. Um, and um, so, I mean, it's something that we also, you know, want to address um, here at the library. And, and so there are a number of different challenges involved with that that the folks have mentioned that you know sometimes it might just be that it doesn't occur to people that um, they might want to do sometimes there are misperceptions about the fact that you in order to work at the library you have to be a librarian um generally speaking a lot of folks think that anybody who works at the library is a librarian and is um, instead of realizing that there are a lot of other skill sets and um, and credentials um, that we look at um, in terms of the um, librarian workforce, so we have um, the, the Masters of Library Science is really kind of the entry level degree um, to one of those positions. Um, so one of the things that I think is worth taking a look at, and I don't know that, I don't know what I think the answer is, but I think it's certainly worth discussion is, um, is that still a requirement that we feel comfortable with? Or um, 
are there substitutions in terms of education and experience um, that um, would make someone qualified and, and let them be successful in those positions? Um, so I think that that is certainly something um, that's worth discussion. Um, that's kind of a big change for us as an organization. So we certainly would want the, the board to um, weigh in on that. I, we have, in my 33 years here, we have never hired anybody for a librarian position who does not have a master's in library science. So um, that, that really is kind of that, that, that entry level um, degree for those positions. Um, and those clearly are the positions that um, generally have um, better pay and allow people to have more influence in the organization. So, um, so this is kind of my summary in terms of the, the, the hiring piece. Um, okay. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> so um, I guess um, in regards to uh, these basically four items, um, just kind of like to go through them and see if um, other trustees have, or any of the any of us trustees have any um, additional information or thoughts from your own perspective or um, your own um, careers or whatever as to um, how you know how you how you feel about these things. So I guess as far as what Amy just uh, mentioned about the uh, experience uh, versus degrees, are there any? You know, comments or feelings uh, you'd like to express on that? Steve? Yes, Tom. Um, I do have, I guess I would like to, um, I guess, uh, emphasize what, uh, what Amy brought forward in terms of uh, experience versus degree. Um, because I do think that sometimes we get in this mode where it's the way it's always been done, and so we're going to continue to do that. But that's just going to continue uh, the problems with any diversity or any anything that you want to address in terms of this. And if, and I emphasize if, you know, experience and that is equals a degree, I don't see any issue to me with having that be an equal weight in a higher decision. Uh, because I do think that if you want to, uh, if you want to address diversity, one of the first problems with the diversity is exactly the old, we've always done it this way, we're always gonna to continue to do it this way, thought. You have to look beyond that. If, and I emphasize the if, they're equal. Thank you, John. Um, any other comments, feelings, things you think ought to be considered in regard to um, degrees versus experience? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Can you yes. hear me? Uh, just to add to what Tom said, now I come from India. I have a degree in library science, and I have a master's degree in another subject. But my degree in library science is not uh, approved by the American Library Association. So, you know, to add to what Tom said, but I have tremendous amount of experience, but I cannot get a job in the United States where I will be called a librarian. But, you know, so it is something where Tom said, where your experience, the number of years that you've put, and the external degrees or external certificates or diplomas that you have got. I mean, to go further, I have a diploma in library management from United Nations, but that doesn't count in the United States, you know? So that is something to be thought of before, there, and there are so many people around who've, just, who've done their degrees from outside this country, or maybe they have done their bachelor's in library science from the United States itself, but they have an experience, but something, Something for us to think more about on this, uh, on an expanded feature is what I feel. And when we talk about diversity, uh, an, a very interesting quote comes to my mind. And, and, uh, and, and it's not because I'm a diverse person, that's not the reason, but this is a very interesting quote. And that is, um, you know, it is like diversity is like being invited uh, to a party 
uh, but inclusion is being asked to dance. So, you know, what happens is, yes, we need to have diversity, no doubt about that. But it's not just enough to have it till we include those ideas, those backgrounds, those experiences, and those perspectives in making it a complete whole in our, I mean, not just our library, not just Danforth Public, but in any organization. So there's something that we should think and talk about much more uh, on this aspect is what I feel. Okay, thank you, Balvika, appreciate that. Um, I have a question for Amy. Um, could you help out this? It sounded like from what Malavika said is that the American Library Association has yep. some. So the American Library Association accredits um, Master the Library Science Program. Yeah. Oh. So that's good. Oh, yeah. okay. I understand. Yeah. So, so one, one of the things that, that we were looking for with this um, agenda item was really so. Um, We've talked about this quite a lot as our administrative staff and um, and have an idea of a, of a structure that we think would work for addressing this library-wide, which would be um, a small steering committee and um, with Lexi leading that, um, and then um, a small group of staff. If we get to be too many people, then we never be able to have a meeting. That's really just one of those challenges. Um, but then um, looking to see if there would be a trustee who would be interested in um, and have the time to sit on that steering committee. Um, I think it's really important for the staff to understand that um, as we're looking at this, that the board is invested in it and they're, um, they, they want us to do these things, their support for um, looking at um, the library wide, um, how we're doing in all of these areas. Um, it's not just hiring, it's you know, outreach. Um, we're, we're starting to build an outreach program. We need to make sure that as we do that, we are not just taking our um, materials checkout and um, book clubs for seniors to places like Senior Star. We need to go um, into um, areas where people are not wealthy white retired people so so there's a whole variety of, of things that we're looking at but then we would envision um a lot of smaller communities you know some you know a group that would look at outreach a group that would look at our library card application policies and who gets cards and things like that um groups that would look at programming um, um book you know groups that would look at the diversity of the voices in our collection um, and um, and maybe even go down the subject heading um, rabbit hole that Malibu, because I'm sure with her work at St. Ambrose is, is quite aware of in terms of subject heading challenges um, and things like that. So um, what, we're, what we're hoping is that, um, that we can get some representation from the trustees um, in doing this work. Um, some things will take policy changes and um, in, in terms of how we do things. Um, right. But I think it's good for the, um, it would be valuable for us um, and for our staff to know that the board is behind these efforts. Because if we just do something and we don't institutionalize it, then it can go away so easily. And that's kind of been the problem, <laughs> you know, throughout history is we, you know, you make this change and then it's, it's not into your ongoing methods of how you do things. And it doesn't become the way it's always been, right? So we want the new way to be the way it's always been, you know, 10 years from now. So, um, so that takes institutional change. Um, it gets, you know, codified into how we do things, as opposed to let's have a committee and then we feel good about the fact that we had these discussions, but nothing really changes permanently. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Thank you. So I guess maybe we'll just cut right to that question. Is curious how board members feel about uh, participating in um, one of these committees, perhaps, or on the steering committee. Um, maybe this go around. Uh, any comments, uh, Amanda? How about you? What do you think? You think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I'd be interested in serving on a on a committee. 
Tá ouvindo? Uh, uh, Steve, uh, uh, Steve, Amy, uh, I would certainly be interested in working uh, on on a committee. And this is this is an important topic, and completely agree with uh, Amy that uh, it needs to, you know, not just talked about it, but institutionalized and you know carried forward. So I would be certainly interested. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Craig. How do you feel about it? Craig, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to Craig. How about Maggie? I'm here I now. think it's a great, Steve. sorry. Go ahead, Craig. I was just going to say, I think it's a uh, really good idea, and I think we have the makings of a committee, I think. Okay, thank you. Okay, now Maggie. Likewise, that's what I was going to say too. I mean, if there's any, if I can help in any way, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly do it. So I think it's a good idea. I'm glad we, you guys brought it up. Okay, thank you. Judy? I agree with that completely. Um, I really like what Amy had to say, and I certainly believe it. Um, if, you know, again, just like everybody else, I'm certainly for it. If you need me, if need me, I can certainly help. Okay, great. Joe? I'd be interested. Great, thank you. Um, um, well, I, again, I would agree. The one, the one thing I think I would suggest is when you start that we have sort of the baseline as to where we're at. In other words, what does the current workforce look like? What does that, where do we want to, and then the committee would sort of possibly <clears throat> determine where we, what we want it to look like. Mm -hmm. And they could be just employment in terms of, you know, do they have the degree, do they don't have the degree, but also diversity in terms of, do we look like the community at large? Okay. Something like the community yeah. at large. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I too think, um, glad Amy brought this up. There's a lot of uh, good information about things we need to look at. Um, and uh, some of these things have, have come up at um, the, like the Iowa Library Association conference. Uh, attended a, I attended a session, the last conference I was at, about um, uh, the issue of uh, how books are you know, categorized and even down to the point where books being, you know, um, by subjects, so to speak, brought together, you know, being in certain areas of the library and that, you know, a person, a patron may not feel comfortable standing there looking at those books because someone might infer something about them uh, based on, you know, what books they're looking at or something like that. So there's a lot of different uh, thoughts that uh, I think need to be addressed here. So, just to reiterate, you know, I too am interested in would be willing to join. So you can look for more information coming about this in okay, the future. Yeah, so we'll um, go ahead and we will, you know, work on um, pulling together, I think, that first um, steering committee. And um, and then once we have that, we'll maybe put out a, or Steve, you can put out kind of um, a call for volunteers who might um, want to be on that steering committee and then. They can, um, from there, um, after that committee has done some work, and I think the idea of, of baseline, and then we talked about goals and how do you, I mean, hiring, you know, it, it's fairly easy to measure um, some of these other things um, in terms of setting goals to see if we're making progress and, and, and working towards um, appropriate goals is, is a bit of a challenge um, as well. Um, but then as we work on subcommittees, um, we'll, um, put a call out for um, for volunteers for that too. So we certainly appreciate everybody being willing to um, help and be involved in this effort. Okay, thank you everyone very much for your willingness to participate in that effort. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is review of the policy regarding requests for reconsideration of library materials. Copy of that was in the packet that Casey sent out. 
Um, so, so this item and then item D, the review of the library electronic resources use policy. So um, normally, um, as everybody knows, we present the policy um, at a board meeting and see if anybody um, has any particular questions um, or you, concerns about, um, about that. Our, our staff, um, let's see. We have not shared this with supervisors yet, so we will um, do that. Um, some of these were updated fairly recently, um, so I don't know that there are going to be lots and lots of um, changes for that. Um, but the idea being that we would um, review and see if anybody had any questions or concerns about them um, at this meeting, and then hopefully um, present the policy um, updated or the same as it is now for approval at the March board. Any questions, comments on this uh, policy? The electronic clips, the uh, request for reconsideration of library materials policy? Okay. <clears throat> Hearing and seeing none. Move on to the other one. How about the electronic resources policy? Is there any questions or comments on that? A couple of questions on this one. Okay. Um, can uh, users bring in like files on a on a uh, thumb drive and put it in the computer and work on them? Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah. Curious about that. Um, <clears throat> so the information that's on here is something that patrons should be aware of. Um, is there something that comes on the screen when they start using a, a public computer that tells them about this policy? Yep. I don't know if anybody reads it, but it's there and they have to agree to it every time they log yeah, on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a thousand. Um, do they, are they warned also as part of that about the possibility of viruses and that we're not responsible for those? Um, I don't know the answer to that one. Okay. I'm yeah, I don't even know it's a good idea, yeah. but I'm just kind of curious. Um, if a person's using a one of the library computers and, uh, and put some background on this, I, I looked at a couple other policies at other libraries, just searched for it and clicked on one. And one of them, I'm not sure how large of a place it even was, but uh, they referenced that computers could be locked. Like if a person wanted to go to the restroom and then they could come back and start using it, but while it was locked, nobody could, you know, change anything or use the computer. Yeah, our, our, our software, our reservation software has that same option. Okay. Um, so that way, um, if you've logged into your session and yeah, and you want to take a break, you know, for a few minutes, you can lock the session and then leave and then come back and put your library card number in again um, and resume your session. Okay. One last one. Um, the New York Public Library, probably one of my co on, they had something in their policy that said, yeah, I'm not necessarily saying this is a good thing, this is just an observation, um, said they are not responsible for lost time or data. <laughs> if you're working on something and you lose it, mm, sorry. <laughs> Okay. That's it happens that occasionally, so it, it might not be a, a bad thing. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, and one other one was um, they prohibited using any paper in the printers that was not provided by the library. Yes, we also do that. Okay. We used to have trouble with people with um, who were printing resumes in particular, oh. and they would want to use a heavier paper, um, and it would sometimes jam the machine. What? Back up. What's the paper policy you just talked about? I'm just kind of interested. Um, um, go ahead. We don't let you bring your own paper to print things on. You can't, or you you must. You no, cannot. you can't. Um, because people have brought some heavier paper products Jams in, off. yeah, cause some damage. Okay. Any other questions, comments on either of these policies? 
Okay. Um, well, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Oh, so let me just say one thing. Um, I don't know if anyone uh, was able to participate in the um, State Library of Iowa uh, presentation of the new uh, trustees handbook. Um, if not, and you're interested, um, that was recorded and is available on the State Library website. Um, and also wanted to make a request. Could we get a copy of that printed out for each of the trustees? Is that possible? Uh, sure. is, is that something that's working? I don't know why we couldn't do that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be good to talk through it. Um, but uh, that at least to give you everyone an opportunity to have that as a reference. Um, it is available Wait. to be downloaded, but um, you know, I always have my computer with me, so it's we we can't hear Malavika, but she shared that uh, she has it and will print it. Correct, Malavika? I think it's in the chat bar. Yes. Okay, we will print one for you, Malavika. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, if there's are there any other questions, comments to consider before we adjourn? Okay, not. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Tom. Is there a second? Thank you, Malavika. I second. Okay. There's a little bit of lag. That's why I acknowledge you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion to second to um, adjourn the meeting. I'm assuming there's no discussion, so I'll call for the vote. Joe had to leave. Uh, Amanda? Yep. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Thank you, Craig. Yes. Thank you, Judy. Yes. Thank you, Malavika. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. And my own vote is yes. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.